there and you conversed and nothing untoward must happen in there, nothing vulgar or nasty or embarrassing. And the only time you would get into that front room was when a family friend came round. They'd go into the front room and my mum would give us that look like, you're still not getting in here. And I think, you know what, we're going to get in that room. If it's the last thing, we're going to get in that room. Every item, I think, in there represented a lot of hours of graft to get the money to go and buy those things. We tended to take the front room for granted and even to be a bit embarrassed by it and seen it as rather kitsch and over the top. But it's part of um, my history and it's part of Caribbean people's history um, and therefore it's part of Britain's history and it's a part of Britain's history which is barely acknowledged, if at all. So what were these things you simply couldn't be without? Here are the top 10 essential items for every West Indian front room. First up, the glass cabinet. The glass cabinet was like, hey, this is the thing which designates a West Indian front room. Our glass cabinet was a pretty grand affair and it was full to the brim of very, very shiny objects. Next, the ornaments. Every West Indian front room has got their crystal ornaments. You would leave food and go and buy ornaments. You have your little dog, your little cat, your little baby, because we want to show it off. Oh, this is my front room. Look at the ornaments. There. For some women, it got a bit out of control. My mum would be very disappointed if you messed up her front room. I mean, you could have thousands of ornaments. And if you move one, she would notice which one it was. The drinks trolley or corner bar? The drinks trolley seemed to be very much for show. And they could get very ornate gold trimming, um, chrome, glass. And there'd be all these miniatures of different spirits. Baby sham or cherry bee. And uh, sweet wine sherry, I think. This was really a male domain, the, the corner bar, because it was usually the men that drank. And this is also for the guests coming up, the man of the house could show off. Next up, the radio ground. The radio ground was essential, wasn't it? Um, the, the radio ground was something that if you didn't have it in your front room, you weren't anybody at all. Whenever we went anywhere, and whenever we gathered together, people would want to hear their own music from home, you know? In, in, in our case, it would be Calypso, Mighty Sparrow, Lord Kitchener, Charlie Pride, especially Blue Beast. Because the, the, the music was something that connected people to a sense of their original selves. And then we have the paraffin heater. From the moment I arrived in England, I was aware of how important the source of heat in your domestic space really was. And what was good about paraffin heater was you could move it around, so you could move it to those areas of the room that had chilled out. And it was awful. It smelled terrible, and it was messy and, and dirty. You would know at school which kids still had to use paraffin, and you would make jokes of it because you could smell it through their clothes. But let's not forget the wallpaper. On the walls, there were wallpaper with patterns. Green and orange and yellow, really bright, I guess, tropical colours, you'd say. Bit of orange hair, blue carpet, brown sofas with orange cushions, with red for much Yes, they purpose to get as much colour and life and movement into this room as possible. I think the kind of the, the, the patterns of, of flowers uh, reflect the kind of tropics back home, the vegetation of it. And then there are the things on the wall. There was usually the, the oddest triumvirate you can imagine. <laughs> Jacob Edinburgh, the Queen, and Malcolm X. Yeah, 
That thing is, I can just imagine them three sitting down for a good old chat. And, and there were a nice reassuring things that you could tell your children where you came from. Some people, if you go on holiday and you buy that blood scroll, you would fold it and put away, but not a West Indian. They put it on the wall to show people that I have been to Hastings, I have been to Bognor Regis, I have been to Margate, I have been to Paris, especially the one from Paris. They put it in the front. My favorite thing in the front room is like, my favorite picture is my religious pictures. You would have homilies such as God bless this house or Christ is the head of this home. And you have these, these religious images dotted around the room. You definitely would see in the front room where Bibles would be open, hymn books would be open, prayer would be said. Religion was very important for many West Indian families because it was a kind of set of value, a moral code that we held on to. Of course, there's always the family photos. In the decade that runs from the middle of the 50s to the middle of the 60s, uh, West Indians breathe life into English high street photography. These immigrants had come here, right? Nobody knew them. They could reinvent themselves. And so many immigrants went into high street studios, such as Harry Jacobs in Brixton, and had their photos taken, dressed up in their Sunday best, with these backgrounds, such as uh, picking up a phone that was not connected to anything, or having a kind of classical Greek column somewhere in, in, in the photo. People would be in every week having their photograph taken to send back to their relatives. They wanted to say to their family and friends back home, I've arrived, I've succeeded, I'm getting on to this so far. And where would we be without the crochet? The thing about the crochet, it would never be there on its own had to go with an, with an ornament. Crochet on the table, crochet on the, co the coffee table. The radiogram or the drinks cabinet. Every little thing in the front room has got a crochet. You walk in and see all the crochets and you think, I think your mum's over the top. In fact, I think your mum's mad. This is too much. I think I was at work every time this thing, at dinner time, I would be sitting there going out. And I said, well, could you make me a set? the dressing table set or coffee table. I was so busy making for other people, I never had much for myself. The artificial flowers. In the Caribbean, there were flowers everywhere. People tended not to cut them and put them in the house. We thought flowers were pretty, so why not have flowers that didn't die? Very simply, they lasted forever. Even though you had to maybe possibly wash them each week, at least you didn't have flies coming in there and they had to be maintained every day. You know, they were there, they were always ready for any guests who came. Once I bring a man into my front room, he came in to have, use the toilet, and I tell him, go and sit in the front room, I'll give you a drink. The time I leave the kitchen and come back out, of all the cheek, the man was sitting on my chair and take off his shoes and his socks. And I said, get up. I hold him by the scruff of his neck. And I frog march him straight through the front door with his socks and his shoes and I throw it out. And I said to him, not in my front room. Mm -hmm.